All right, so here's a podcasting workshop presented by the Media Creation Lab team. Uh, so about an hour of content, three parts, probably about 15 to 20 minutes for each part, and then there's like an extra half hour if uh, you want to try other things. Okay. Uh, yeah. So history and the types of podcasting. Part two will be kind of like a workflow checklist of things to ask yourself and consider and determine if you're doing a podcast or a podcast episode. Part three, we're just going to practice using the Zoom H4N if there's time, and then practice editing using Audacity, which is an open source audio editing software. So it's already installed on all those computers. So uh, part one, history and types of podcasts. So podcasting is a phenomenon. It's super popular. But its lineage goes back like more than 120 years. So 1901, the first discovery of wireless broadcasting. 1920, the first commercial U.S. radio station. 1930s to 40s, the golden age of radio. 1930s, the first TV broadcast in Europe. Uh, 1954, color TV broadcasting. By the 1960s, widespread adoption of TV in households. 1969, the U.S. Department of Defense launched ARPANET, which is the precursor to the Internet. Uh, 1980s, live satellite broadcasting allowed uh, live footage from around the world. 2001, Apple re uh, released their iPod. And um, a few years later, the term podcast was coined by a journalist. And then a year after that, Apple started to distribute podcasts on their iTunes platform. And that's when podcasting as a medium really took off. But a lot of the, the techniques and uh, the tools, is really, it's, it's not a new thing. It's just really the context that's changed and the access and the means. Yes. Okay. So podcast types. I mean, I just kind of uh, did a survey of the most popular podcasts in the U.S., Canada, and the world. Culture and entertainment, education and infotainment, news and politics, self-help, true crime, which kind of surprises me. Those are the most popular genres. In terms of methods of communication, you've got debates, interviews, recaps, and reports. So I'm just kind of curious, does anybody listen to podcasts? There you go. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's the next slide? Okay. So that's really it. So part two, planning, production, and editing. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to start with the end. So you want to consider the audience. Who, who, who are your listeners? What is their familiarity with the topic or topics that you're going to discuss? Are they experts? Are they just more lay people? Do you need to describe terms and give background on figures? Or can you just assume that they already know that? You want to consider cultural factors as well. So maybe like um, you have a global reach and you have to be mindful of like idioms, figures of speech that might not translate all the time. And you also want to consider the listener situations. Like, like what are they doing when they're listening? You want to accommodate that. So I'll Touch more on that briefly. And you also want to consider technical specs, like how long are the sessions going to be, what file format, the file quality and size, and the volume, the decibel volume. Um, so again, this workshop is more making the assumption that you're, you're probably going to be doing a podcast for coursework. It kind of assumes that the this content, the audience and technical, technical, specs, will all, technical specs will already be provided by your instructor, right? But let's say, for example, you want to make a podcast on your own. You want to be the next whoever, famous podcaster. So you want to consider um, a theory called jobs to be done. So think of your podcast as any other product or service, right? So like what job would people hire your podcast to do for them, right? So like um, and what requirements do they have? Do they look to meet when they're hiring podcasts? So like an example would be, Listener wants to hire your podcast to keep them occupied for their commute. So you have to consider the optimal length, maybe the subject matter. Maybe they're looking for something that uh, doesn't, that's not controversial, that's not depressing, so they're not in a bad mood when they start their day at work. Maybe something that uh, they can stop and start, so maybe like segments, maybe that's what suits them, right? It's more like a metaphor, a job to be done. So it's like, like the original theory was a business professor. He was hired by McDonald's to investigate why people were buying milkshakes. Milkshakes, and he kind of did research and he found that the people who were buying milkshakes were they were hiring, quote unquote, hiring the milkshake to keep them busy during their drive, their commute. So they needed something that they could consume with one hand, something that uh, they could consume over a period of time during the commute, and also something that didn't like fill them up. So, so it's more like a metaphor. Does that make sense? 
uh, yeah and next thing to consider is you want to this is kind of important so the first thing is you want like establish what is the story question of my my session or my episode so it's kind of like think of it as like uh, uh, your 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 session is a magazine like what's what's the uh, the, t the headline going to be or like a YouTube video what's the title going to be so it's going to be in the form of a question that one encapsulates encapsulates what the content is about and two entices people to listen so things like will our hero save the day you know can the uh, student populace at York you know accommodate or uh, adjust to working on campus uh, how do whatever yeah so that's that's basically the story question. So you don't necessarily have to explicitly ask it, but that's you want to put that front and center as you're doing the planning. And then the story answer is really the content addresses the question or questions that you pose. So yeah, it can be not necessarily a definitive answer, but it has to your content has to address the story question. And you want to consider like the characters, so like the people involved, who you're going to interview, what are the subjects you're going to study, and so forth. Uh, four, if possible, you want to at least kind of convey the challenges that they face and the actions that they do to, to overcome those challenges because that's conflict and all stories need some form of conflict to be interesting right um, you also want to consider what to reveal and what to not reveal so maybe during the course of your study you come across some insight maybe you want to convey that or maybe you want to put in your your pocket put, put in a drawer and like maybe say it for a later uh, episode for example yeah uh, and you want to do some research so of the topic maybe do a general interview consider digital and real documents you might want to consider consult subject matter uh, experts with interviews if you're going to do a more research interviews you definitely want to have a focused set of questions try to ask open-ended questions like how and the why so that they don't they're not able to answer with just one word do some pre-research to have an understanding of the topic because you know assuming their time is limited you want to make be effective with that so have do a little bit of pre research and also in terms of orders um, you want to start general questions and move down to the specific questions so you start with the easy softball questions and then you move into the hard-hitting ones I don't know if anybody saw the Y file posting today um, I forget his name McLaughlin he's a professor here at York he teaches journalism he's releasing a book on interviews and he said the common mistake that people have is they want to find they want to seem smart so that right off the bat they start with the hard-hitting questions but you want to ease into that um, again you want to if possible get your interview subjects to describe challenges that they face and the actions that they overdone so maybe what was the first time that you or the last time you, you or what was the most memorable incidents incident that you came up just get like a, an elaborate story and again if you're doing even if you're not doing it for academic coursework you have to consider ethical ethical considerations like do you actually need informed consent do you need like a written form that you need to give to your subject to have them complete so that's that's definitely something to consider i mean i could go on about that but just definitely keep that in your mind um 2.4 create a script or a plan even if it's more like a loose at least have some kind of plan and methods we kind of discuss so there's debates interviews recaps reenactments that's kind of something that like was mentioning like a narrated real time in the present you're re recounting a story but you're happy you're describing as it happened so there's like this story back in the days of radio like um somebody was reading the story of like an invasion of earth and people thought it was real because it was it was described in the present yeah and there's reports that's common in news and you also want to consider like ask yourself what kind of format do i want either you can have a seat um and also what kind of what level of structure so there's low medium high um, you also want to look at exemplars like popular podcasts that you might want to follow so like low medium high structure it's uh it's pretty viable so you look at um the most popular podcasts most of them are kind of like interviews that are fairly low structure they're just kind of like like a conversation but you also might have like a medium structured or a semi-structured interview that's more of like uh, investigative or research interview so like a news podcast and then you might have like not as common but you might have a high structured interview so that's like the kind of thing you might see where like people will it's almost like a survey on the street voice of the populace uh, voice of the people 
And so you just ask your set of questions and then that's it. Um, yeah, you also want to consider, do I want to use external artifacts like music, effects, clips, permissions, and licenses? So does that, can anyone think of like a specific podcast that they know of? You don't necessarily have to be an avid listener, but what's, can you name one specific podcast and think about what kind of methods they use and what kind of level of structure? Okay, just briefly, I can think of the Joe Rogan experience. Um, I don't, the lab doesn't necessarily endorse or condemn any podcasts that I mentioned, but that, as far as I can tell, it's like one of the most popular podcasts in the world. And it's like basically almost all interviews, but it's super low structure or it's just like a conversation. There's also The Daily, which is the New York Times. I would say that's fairly medium level structure is a combination of interviews and in the field reports. And I think they use clips pretty effectively. Clips like sound bites. So like, for example, um, the daily. Yeah. So I, I just sampled an episode. So they, they interviewed people in Florida from a uh, hurricane. So like you might have, you know, a person in the field, it's like, okay, so I was in Florida and I interviewed a bunch of people and I found that most of the residents in this area are transplants from, uh, Michigan and so on. And then you have a clip of somebody actually saying, it's like, yeah, I, I, I came here from Michigan three years ago and I'm here. So it's like five to 10 seconds. They just kind of sprinkle it within the thing. So it, it adds variety. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So definitely you want to do pre-production after you have your, your plan, you know, what methods you want to use the format, so on. Um, think of the recording schedule. What, what date in the year, what day of the week, time of day you're doing an interview. Like think about, what time of day they, you're coming at. So they might be at the end of their workday, so they might be a bit tired, so you might have to make that adjustment. Think of location and travel time if you're going on location to record. Duration and breaks, contact info, everybody who, who you might need to know. And if possible, if you have a location, go to that location in advance. Kind of look at the space, you know, what kind of background noise there are, what might disrupt you. Think of the positioning of the speakers. Look, think of practical things like you know, are there power outlets? Are they easy accessible? You know, restrooms as well. And equipment like recording equipment, do you want like a more field recorder or do you have time and space to set up like a, a desktop microphone, right? Um, and consider other situational factors. So for example, in March or April, we had a student who wanted to do an interview. They brought an outside guest, but they didn't realize that at the time York was not permitting non-students and faculty. So that, that was a barrier that they didn't anticipate. So something like that, right? You want to avoid that if you can. Like the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at now? Okay. And you want to do the recording. So in terms of diet, try to avoid dairy products and carbonated drinks in the hours leading up. Dairy products because they produce mucus and phlegm, and that can kind of make it a bit harder to speak. Dairy, you know, carbonated drinks like soft drinks, you know, they, they can hurt your throat, also, you know, make you burp. So in terms of warm up, try to do tongue twisters. Just do a web search for tongue twisters. Positioning uh, for mics, you want to hold them about four to six inches away from the mouth. So maybe at the base of the neck or the collar. That's the ideal. And think of like note taking. Do you like reading notes and for taking notes? Do you want to use a smartphone? Do you want to use paper? If you're going to use paper, it's best to arrange it so you're not shuffling because that will pick up on the audio. And if you're taking notes, think of like, do you, be mindful of the keyboard. Is that going to pick up on the audio recording or scratching of your pen as well? So try to anticipate that. Um, and then you do the actual recording. So when you're doing recording, you want the volume to, to peak at around minus 12 decibels. So every recorder will have some kind of like visual indicator to, to uh, represent the volume. And most of them will have like a scale that shows the decibel values. And you want to try to mitigate distractions, so like smartphones, make sure they're turned off, speakers, other people in the area. Timers, you might want to use a timer of some kind. And if you're using a timer, do you want it to be audible on the recording? And if you're actually videotaping, do you want it to be visible on the recording? So maybe you're doing like a, a group podcast round table. Maybe something like a visual clock might help you. Yeah. And when you're doing recording, it's a good idea to have five to ten seconds of just kind of no speaking at the beginning and the end of the track. That helps you when you're recording or editing down the road. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to edit editing, you wanna to try to organize your files however you can. Maybe 
use folders, group them by media type or the session or the name of the people involved. Try to use a naming convention for files so that they're automatically grouped together. Start with like the larger containers like year, and then month and day, maybe last name, first initial. And then music effects and clips, you might have to source them from the web. Do web search for royalty free. Just keep in mind that royalty free doesn't necessarily mean that it's free. So like a lot of services will offer like um, clips that you can buy a license for. So when you check out, you enter like the projected audience size and the duration. And then you pay them the service and the service then pays the royalty to the, the content creator. Um, some cases you might be able to um, get it for free. You can make the argument like you could, if there's a music song that you want to write, you can write to the record label, especially if it's a smaller record label. Just fill out a form, ask for a license and just indicate your use. I, I can show you an example of that later. That's a good question. So there's something called um, public domain. I don't know, am I familiar with that? Like after a certain number of years, after the death of the creator, it enters the public domain. So you don't have, it's copyright free. But if you're using classical music that's from like 300 years ago, like the actual recording that you're using might be copyrighted. So you have to think about that. Do you know what I mean? Like let's say you're, you're using a sonata that was composed in like whatever, 1600, but the actual recording was made five years ago. That would be probably under, so you probably could not use it. But if you perform it on your, yourself, like a cover, you could use that. Or like I said, you can maybe contact the record label or the artist, yeah. Okay, so it comes time to editing. Do I need to do audio cleaning? So make adjustments to the volume, so positive or negative gain. Consider background noise and pops. And again, music effects and clips, make sure it's suitable volume. If you're having background music, you don't want it to overpower the speech, so you're gonna have to lower the volume about the timing so if you're going to use music i think a good suggestion would be to like put in a spot where people will notice it's starting and notice it ending but in the between people shouldn't really notice that people are talking over it and you want to make sure that the, the mood is appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish yeah okay and when it comes to publishing i mean again if you're doing it for coursework probably just use the designated course content system you can try uploading to YouTube and other social media platforms. There's also audio uh, specific media platforms like Spotify and SoundCloud. And there's podcasting hosting services like Buzzsprout. They have like free services as well as like paid ones. Yeah, paid subscriptions, I mean. 